Welcome to Super Meat World! This time we will play Paradise Lost, but can we find it in the recommended page? No we don't! That's the second time that the recommended list has failed us, so we're gonna have to type it in manually. Again. During the course of these videos, we will check out the efficiency of the recommended chapter list of Super Meat World by trying to find the chapter that we want to play, and if we don't find it, then we can type it in manually in order to be able to get in just in order to see how good it is. In the meantime, we're playing Paradise Lost, once again by Novosilisco. This is the second chapter that he's done, in fact he started work on these levels right after finishing Krems. And you can already see that this is a more advanced chapter, because things definitely have evolved into the graphics here, but yeah, unfortunately he didn't see that this part of the level can be skippable due to a very precise jump. But then again, the jump is really hard to do, and it kinda is easy to overlook. So, the main thing with Paradise Lost is that, compared to Cramps, this is quite an harder chapter, but the difficulty is still rather accessible. We're talking more about Light World Rapture or Light World Hell in type of difficulty. Perhaps a little bit harder than that in some part, but it still remains very playable for the most part. Once again, this is one of these chapters that usually is recommended to people who want more Super Meat Boy whenever they're done, and they don't want to go into the overly intimidating habits of impossible level that we'll eventually get to later. But in the meantime, we're gonna stick to the easier chapters for the while being, just in order to get some well-deserved practice, and a break too. Contrary to Cramps, Paradise Lost usually has more of a forest vibe to it. In fact, most of the levels in it use the forest style set, but there are some exceptions there and there because we will have to take some visits into the Rapture and the Salt Factory tile sets, but in overhaul, most of the level will involve the forest, if only because the forest is one of the only tile sets into the game that has spinning saw blades. Oh, and this level is definitely harder than I make it look like. In fact, this is one of those levels that I usually will expect to take at least 10 tries in order to beat. I mean, just look at how lucky everything was. But yeah, when I'm talking about different tile sets involving different hazards, yeah, you're limited to the hazards that you can use depending on the hazards that you see into the main game itself. I mean, for instance, you can only use rocket launchers into the Salt Factory and Rapture, so for instance, you could not make a forest level and have, say, maw launchers or uh, gravity orbs into it, no. In fact, the only hazards that you have into forest is saw blades, spinning saw blades, and fire. In fact, you don't even have locked doors and keys into the forest, so you have to be even more creative with your obstacle placement in order to do proper levels into the forest. At least, not without repeating yourself, but... Holy shit, I was like two seconds and a half over the par time. Hold on, maybe there's something that I've missed. In fact, yeah, I'm not gonna do the par times for these levels because as you might have noticed, the par time don't even work on those Super Meat World. They don't do anything. In fact, the game don't even acknowledge that you've got the par time. And most of the time, it's incredibly hard to do par times because the level creator is not able to set manually as part time for the level, thinking, okay, I think this is a good measure for a time that people should be able to reach. No, because part times are calculated automatically upon playing a level, because in order to be able to upload a level in Super Meat World, you have to beat it first. And then the part time will be the time that it took the level creator to make it through his stage, plus 10%. And usually, most level designers will rush through their levels as fast as they can in order to be able to be done with uploading their chapter as fast as possible. So as a result, they speed through all of their levels and the par times get incredibly hard to match. But hey, once again, it doesn't matter because the game doesn't acknowledge it anyway. But yeah, one of the things that I don't like as much in Paradise Lost is that the difficulty for it is sometimes schizophrenic. I mean, the previous level was kinda hard and funny because you had to avoid a lot of projectiles on the screen, but then this other level was simply just a run through an hallway with a few saw blades there and there. In fact, this level is a lot harder because, yeah, the ending part is a lot trickier because you have to navigate the corner while avoiding the rocket launcher that shoots at twice the usual speed, but hey, at least it's a completely clear curve and there's not a whole lot of things to take into account, so the rockets are basically your only enemy. 
In fact, I'm surprised to hear that so many people in overall tend to dislike rocket launchers because I love rocket launchers and in fact I've made a chapter in which rocket launchers was the main gimmick of the entire thing, but yeah, rocket launchers are fun whenever they're used in total levels that are usually pretty clear, are not complicated and simply give you a large margin of place and error in order to maneuver, not something that you have to go through an incredibly tiny corridor and be incredibly precise while there's a rocket launcher shooting like 5 rockets a second in your face, but that will do it for that. In the meantime, this level, however, is incredibly amazing, as you can see. It's a race against the saw blade. Who will win? Is it Poop Boy? No, it isn't. This level is the more accessible version of the level Klinger Winger in Battletoads, because yeah, this level is much easier. In fact, yeah, it's pretty hectic, but at least it's incredibly playable, and it really gives you a good sense of rush. This is probably my favorite level in the entire chapter. While Paradise Lost in overall is a much harder chapter than Cram's, usually the gameplay mechanics and mentality is pretty much the same. The levels are mainly based around speed and simply accessibility and fun. And yeah, this level really looks amazing, but unfortunately doesn't really play all that well. I mean, it's a little bit too easy. It probably would have fitted well in Cram's though. On a graphical standpoint, this is probably my favorite level of the entire episode. It really does a good job of looking incredibly sinister and, I don't know, it looks as if you're wading into some sort of radioactive pit. And I wish these radiations gave me the power to, uh, okay, to not die in horribly stupid ways like this. However, I'll gladly take the power which allows you to survive to rockets, or at least make me able to avoid them, and also not do this jump, remember. Do a wall jump before you go all the way up there. Wall jumps are your friend. Try it, because they make you go a whole lot higher. But yeah, as you can see, for the most part, this chapter is once again incredibly self-explanatory, the level layouts are incredibly simple, and they remain challenging enough in order to be interesting. This level is incredibly strange because, as you can see, you just hold right at the beginning of the level and you will dodge every single obstacle, except this one because I've been a careless idiot. But yeah, this level does an incredibly good job of looking incredibly intimidating, but the actual solution to this level is so easy. But yeah, this is why the level is called Deception. It's a pretty novel idea for a level, but I usually don't really care for it that much, if only because the actual gameplay is not really that great. But this level, however, is incredibly great. One of those incredibly simple, but yet harder level, because yeah, the jumps are much trickier than they look. In fact, this level really seems hypnotizing in some way, just really suiting to look at all of these incredibly long and slow saw blades swinging all around the place in unison while you're drifting into outer space. Another level that I really like. I don't know, I just really like the minimalistic presentation of this level for some reason, even though they usually don't do it for me. But this level, however, is pretty much the I really don't care about this level at all level of the episode. This level, I really don't see the reasoning or the design behind it, if only because, well, it's a pretty long level, but in overhaul, it's pretty boring and there's nothing in it which is actually even hard or challenging, so you're just drifting to it and the only enemy that you have here is pretty much your own attention span, because at one point you'll be like, ah, oh, come on, will this level end already? I really don't want to play it anymore. And... It Honestly, it doesn't look that great, and why the hell am I rating that 5 stars? Jesus Christ! <laughs> but yeah, you thought that the final level of Cramps was pretty lackluster and a letdown? Well, congratulations, because this level is pretty much the complete opposite. I just really think that this is a much more efficient way of doing a long level, which just feels incredibly epic. I mean, you've got this long, sprawling structure that you're scaling all the way up, and then you have the ending of this level, with the majestic bird soaring into the sky. This is probably my favorite way to end an episode, and probably a level. In all of the chapters, levels, anything that this game has to offer, this is probably my favorite ending. And it also helps that the level is pretty fun and cool to play at the same time. So, that'll be it for Paradise Lost. As you've noticed, definitely harder than Cramps, but it's still pretty accessible and fun. Coming up next, we will play her first teammate chapter, entitled Butcher Boy.